April Fool's is a day. Sorry, I meant to say April Fool's is a day that many people tend to love or despise depending on who they are. Everyone wants to make a joke that day, which can range from some genuinely funny stuff to pretending to break up with your special ones. What the hell is wrong with you people? Video games are no exception to this rule. Every year you can expect that an online game will have a certain event on April 1st, or that the developers will crack a joke just for fun. Normally you could expect this from gaming magazines or websites, but I think it's cooler when the developers themselves want to have a little fun with their audiences, and that's what I wanted to talk about in this video. To see how some of these jokes are nothing more than innocent pranks, but also to see those rare occasions where they evolve into something bigger. Let's start with the simple stuff. I think that every April 1st the bare minimum you can expect is a forum on social media that, sure, is funny, but anyone with two brain cells can see they are just an April Fool's joke. That doesn't make them any less though. We've gotten some pretty funny stuff like Guilty Bear, Katsuhiro Harada himself confirming Eevee from Pokemon as a DLC character in Tekken 7, Sega announcing Sonic Furo on Tears, a bad set whose joke is clever because Furo means bath in Japanese. Love Light is in a crossover with the Powerpuff Girls. Judge Club Games once revealed Shovel Knight 64, a new version of the game, not for the Nintendo 64, but rather the Commodore 64. One time HAL Laboratories made Kirby a Cube and Cube a Circle, and this is so wrong. Another year, they announced that they won't be celebrating Kirby's 25th anniversary anymore, but rather waddle this 25th anniversary. Have you ever wanted to own a figurine of the president of Platinum Games, Kenichi Sato? Well, according to Platinum Games, for the low price of $3, you can, with a small chance of getting a Hideki Kamiya surprise. All of these jokes share something in common. They're very simple, and all you have to do is have some common sense or look at your calendar to realize they're nothing more than a prank. But there are times when these jokes are so elaborate that for a second you believe that they are real, or at the very least, they leave a stronger impact on you because they look so legit. Fire Emblem is an expert in April Fool's jokes. For example, they made Fire Emblem Fates, and to this day, I'm still severely affected by it. But after that, Intelligent Systems went on to make tamer and actually good jokes. It all started in 2017, when they announced Fire Emblem Battle of Revolution, an 8-bit game where secondary characters Valbar, Leon, and Kamui will become protagonists, and together they will travel in a setting based on medieval Japan. They even went as far as to make official art, as well as character portraits and battle sprites. Nowadays all April Fool's jokes fall on the mobile game Heroes, but I wanna say that they always do some pretty great stuff. In 2019 we got a new legendary hero, Faye the Owl, carrying a brand new weapon type and ridiculously broken stats, nothing could stand in her way. Her banner was supposed to last until midnight April 1st, and players had a 0% chance to summon her. Which isn't too different from a regular gacha banner now that I think of it. At the very least we got a free accessory in the end. 2020 wasn't so much of a joke, but in order to celebrate April Fools and the series' 30th anniversary, Intelligent Systems released this cute Fate channel with 8-bit aesthetics. It was a simple but charming celebration, as all main characters got 8-bit mini sprites and a brief roll call. In the end, we also got accessories based on those mini sprites similar to last year. 2021's April Fools was... Yeah, I have no words to describe this. This is official Fire Emblem media you're looking at right now. But I swear, it looks like one of those Gmod parodies from the 2010s. This is so cursed, but I kinda like it. And hey, we also got a free accessory that year too. 2022 is easily the best one they have done. Heroes released a video featuring Veronica, Ash, and the summoner forming a band together to play a song. But unlike last year's prank, this one was so elaborated, so pretty, they even went as far as to motion capture the whole thing. It was a video that was both enjoyable and amusing. Seeing the summoner going apeshit with a tambourine really made this late April Fools much more memorable. Aside from companies and developers making images and videos, some online games like to make April Fools a bit more special. Overwatch. This game once decided to add googly eyes to all its characters during April Fools. Among Us added a horse mode, and just like the name implies, it was a day-only event where all crewmates could turn into horses, and it was a sight to behold. 
Fortnite decided to have a little fun with what was popular at the time, and in 2021 they added Diamond Hands, a skin based on the well-known meme, Stonks. Pokemon Showdown while not an official game made by the Pokemon company, it still has a huge following and it does something worth of mention. Every April 1st, every sprite of the Pokemon is replaced by these unhinged MS Paint drawings and edits of the monsters. It's funny as hell for sure, but it's also hard not to admire the fact that they edited every single Pokemon in the game. That's a lot of dedication, just for one yearly tradition. One April Fools I especially remember was in Club Penguin. I loved playing this game as a kid, every day was an adventure and the events made it all much more special. April Fools in Club Penguin usually had the game pranking the players by taking them to a completely different area when they would try to enter a building. Some areas would be slightly different so players would try to figure out what had changed. Other times boxes would appear all over the island, and all players could get free items. I especially have fond memories of the 2010 April Fools party, because in the secret box dimension every 15 minutes you will see an orange puffle fly by. Back then, those creatures were already available for people with memberships, but since this was a secret and I had no subscription, I thought there was a way for everyone to acquire said Puffle. I must have spent hours waiting for him to appear hoping to find a way to adopt him. Unfortunately, that never happened and I just wasted my time. But sometime later, I will finally get a subscription and get my own orange puffle. Then months later, I was gonna go out on vacation and I asked a friend if he could take care of my puffles while I was away. And I think you can imagine what happened next. When I returned, he didn't fit my puffles at all. They escaped, and then I lost my subscription, making me unable to adopt all of them again. Needless to say, I haven't seen him since we graduated from elementary school. I hope he's doing alright. One joke that I found obscure but pretty funny nonetheless was in Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Diamond Records, a gacha game exclusive for mobile phones where players would summon characters from Phantom Blood all the way to Bento Aureo. In 2019, they announced a new mysterious character for April Fools. The character ended up being Leaky Eyed Luca from Part 5, and he became part of a banner where he was the only character you could roll. His event battle was ridiculously easy, and he had the smallest skill tree in the entire game. For those who don't know, Leaky Eyed Luca is a character from Part 5 who appears once and then dies in 3 minutes, which made him kind of a joke within the JoJo fanbase. So while his inclusion was just an April Fool's prank, at the very least he was very loyal to the source material. League of Legends Again? This series really seems to treat April Fools like a big deal. Every year they always celebrate it big. There's the Ultra Fire mode that I don't know how it works because I've never played League of Legends. And I don't plan to. But this one has been a staple since 2015, returning every year for the April Fools event. What I find easier to understand, however, are the introduction of new icons and skins for April 1st, with some standouts being Pajama Guardian Cosplay Urgot, Earth the Manatee, and the most important of them all, Pizza Delivery Siever. The world hasn't been the same since that skin released, and I refuse to elaborate on that. Valhalla Kids this is the perfect opportunity to remind you Valhalla is one of the greatest games ever made and you should play it, and I have a whole video about it. Anyway, for April Fool's 2018, Sukeban Games released this cute little freeware game where all female characters were turned into schoolgirls, where you play as the one and only Dana Sane to find out who crashed Say's festival booth. The gameplay is super basic, it doesn't go far beyond the typical go here to talk to this person and then move somewhere else to do the same. It's a really short game too, you can finish it under an hour. But hey, any love Valhalla can get is welcome in my book. And I'm sure you will say the same if only you fucking played it! Dragalia lost. Please, spare three seconds of silence out of respect for this dead game. Okay, let's continue. When this game was alive, back in 2019, it surprised a ton of players when they booted up their game on April 1st, and instead of their usual Dragalia lost screens, they got... Not the slumber shot a bullet hell featuring one of the game's characters. And what makes it even cooler is that they made music, assets, a whole boss battle, and even different difficulties just for this little prank. Even after finishing it, your game will return to normal, but you could still access this minigame for a few extra days. And I think that speaks lengths on how much fun the developers were having with this prank. And speaking of, 
okay, a bit of topic. But I've always felt bad for Dragalia Lost. I never played it myself, but I could always tell how much the developers genuinely cared for this world that they made. They were always super generous and constantly heard player feedback. Even after the game was shut down, they were super grateful for everyone for supporting them all these years. And then comes Nintendo outright saying, yeah, we actually never wanted this game. Oh, okay, ignore the game that had tons of love put into it while you keep making your 10th consecutive incomplete Mario Sports game. Speaking of Nintendo, Animal Crossing also loves to do a little something for April Fools. In the GameCube game, Tortimer can give the player a copy of Super Tortimer, an NES game that doesn't work. On top of that, various characters will play pranks on the player when spoken to. In Wild World, you get a letter from your mother telling you that a tree fell in their house and that they lost everything, only to reveal later that she was just joking. What? City Fall has once again Tortimer playing a prank on the player while also giving them the leaf item. A furniture that looks exactly the same as other furniture items when you drop them outside. New Leaf made April Fool's a bigger deal, where Blanca will challenge the players to play a game where she will disguise herself as one of the villagers, and you must find out who is the imposter among us, rewarding the players with pictures of the villagers. New Horizons backpedal hard. The game completely removed any mention of April Fool's. It was not until a year and a half later where they acknowledged the day by adding a whoopee cushion as a seasonal item. That's it. All they did was add a whoopee cushion. I think that describes perfectly my feelings for that game. The funny thing about April Fools is that most people will take any post or announcement they see as a joke. But what happens when you turn the tables on them and turns out that your joke is actually the real thing? For this scenario, I could only find two examples, Goat Simulator and Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. The first was released in April 1st, while the latter was revealed on the same day, only to release later that month. And I don't know if both of them being tied to April Fool's helped with their success. Goat Simulator was mostly a trendy game, but that still doesn't take away how immensely popular it was back in the day. And I'm not the biggest Far Cry expert, but I've always seen many people praise this DLC a lot, and would have liked to see it become a full-fledged game. It's very interesting how at first they were thought to be nothing more than jokes, but in the end turned out to be the real deal. Now there's one last thing I'm gonna look into. Unlike Code Simulator or Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon, what happens when you make a joke with the full intent of making a joke but eventually evolving into a real thing? To illustrate my point, let's go to Way Forward, a company better known for making the Shantae games and for always making April Fool's jokes. In 2013, they announced a new game called Cat Girl Without Salad, a bizarre shoot em up that combined elements from other genres in an incredibly weird way while having over-the-top characters, interfaces and colors. At the time, this was nothing more than a simple April Fool's joke, and even fans were able to tell that. But some of them liked the concept so much that they continued to ask way forward if this will become an actual game. So, it took them three more years in 2016 when they finally made the game a reality for Humble Bundle subscribers, followed by a Switch port in April 1st, 2020. The game became a reality because the developers thought it would be cool. Every April Fool's, they make a joke that makes them think, wouldn't it be cool if this was an actual thing? And that's how Cat Girl Without Salad became a reality, letting players attack like in a JRPG, use a bootleg Mega Man to destroy enemies, and play DDR while avoiding attacks. This game went from a joke to a fully playable shitpost. Pokemon Go went through something similar. The game also started out as an April Fool's joke at Google when the company released a video in 2014 inviting people to use Google Maps to catch Pokémon for April Fool's Day. At the time, Niantic Labs, which are known for making Pokémon GO, were still owned by Google, but eventually parted ways with the company a year later to expand on the idea. As you probably know, they eventually found their way with the Pokémon company, developing the Pokémon GO we know nowadays. Whether that's a good or a bad thing, I'll let you decide. I haven't played the game in years. Yakuza Like a Dragon. This is probably one of the most well-known examples, but it's still the best of them all. As all fans of the series know, after Yakuza 6 closed the chapter of Kiryu Kasuma, uh, partially I mean, it was only natural to soft reboot the franchise with a new protagonist. 
For the longest time, many Yakuza fans were already aware of all this information, and we were all expecting the next chapter to be an improvement over 6 and Kigomi 2. But eventually, something unexpected happened. In April 1st, 2019, Ryuga Gotoku Studios released a video where they showed how the Yakuza series will play in a JRPG setting. And fans of the games were so mesmerized at how fun and creative the trailer was, how they could combine turn-based mechanics with the unique essence of Yakuza. The trailer was so well received that the developers decided to change the course of the franchise, relegating the beat-em-up gameplay to spin-offs, while the main series will continue as full JRPGs. There's been some debate of whether this trailer truly changed the type of game like a dragon was meant to be. I've only found one source claiming that the trailer didn't turn like a dragon in a JRPG, and yeah, the guy makes some valid points. But that's only one source. And regardless of what truly happened behind the scenes, I genuinely believe this April Fool's joke played a part into shaping like a dragon the way it was. Even if it started out as a joke. Even if some fans drop the series because they dislike JRPGs, I think it was worth it because in the end we received not only one of the best Yakuza games ever made, we got one of the best JRPGs in existence with one of the coolest main characters ever made. And besides, you can still experience the beat'em ups through the Judgment games, with Lost Judgment also being one of the greatest games ever made alongside Yakuza Like a Dragon. So, we all win in the end. So that's all I could find. Is there an April Fool's show you think I missed? Which one would you have liked to see become real? Let me know in the comments. I know some people may find this day annoying, but I don't know. I think it's pretty neat how some developers want to have some fun with their audiences, and I think it's cool how creative they can get with their pranks, and sometimes see how those pranks can evolve into something more. But anyway, Thank you so much for your time, I really hope you enjoyed the video, and if you want to support the channel, you know, liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing, or Patreon, that will mean so much to me. Have a wonderful day, and take care, and don't forget, will you make me a sandwich? Mm -hmm.